life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you never know but then things change you're not in a valley don't lose faith child you are never alone for the god on the mountain is still god in the valley when things go wrong he'll make them God of the good time, if you're God in the bad time, the God of today, if you're God of the night, we don't call faith when we're up on the mountain, but the call comes easy when my faith says. Sometimes my feet grow weary 
and so sore, but a brighter day is coming. Soon I'll reach the other shore, and I won't have to worry anymore. No, I won't have to worry when I reach the other shore. All my trouble will be over, and I'll rest forevermore. My eyes will be on Jesus, and my heart will be aglow, and I won't have to worry anymore. Someday when life is over, and I've said my last farewell, I'll see my Savior standing at the door. He's going to say, my child, you're welcome. All your cares are left behind, and you don't have to worry anymore. No, I won't have to worry when I reach the other shore. All my troubles will be over, and I'll rest forevermore. My eyes will be on Jesus, and my heart will be aglow, and I won't have to worry anymore. No, we won't have to worry James chapter 5, starting in verse 13. James 5 and 13. Five and thirteen, you said? Yep. You know, sometimes God gives you a message that you've already preached. But I think that's okay because if He gives it to you, somebody needs it. Amen. Amen. Everybody that can stand will read the Word of God. Is any among you afflicted? let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing songs. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall rise him up. And if he committed sins, they shall be forgotten him. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, a fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which can, uh, uh, converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. 
Father, we come to you this morning, God. Lord, we just pray for each and every one that's here this morning, Lord, that they would receive this word. Father, if there's any among us, Lord, that, that is sick, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would lead them to the altar, Lord, during the altar call this morning, Lord, so that we may pray for them. You know, the Bible tells us, Lord, that we should pray for one another. And Father, this is, like Brother Philip said this morning, this is family here. And we need to try our best to take care of each other, Lord. Father, I just feel the need this morning, Lord. I felt it last night that someone needs to come up, Lord, and be prayed over. Lord, you know the need of each and every heart that's here this morning, God. Lord, I just pray that they would be obedient, Lord, and, and come up and ask for prayer this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I look around and I can see pain on a few faces this morning. I know I'm give out with uh, all these trips to Andrews this week, plus we had to go to the doctor Thursday, and, and I'm just wore out. And I expect it other people are too. I mean, it's, you know, everybody's health seems to be gradually going mm -hmm. down. And, but God, you know, He'll take care of us no matter what we're going through. That's right. Devil That's told right. me this morning when I woke up, he said, I just called in sick today. I wouldn't even bother if you going back over there. You done been over five times this week. <laughs> I just said, Devil, get behind me. There you I'm go. not listening to you. It would have been so easy to lay back down this morning. <laughs> but if I'm able to go, I'm going to be here. That's a... Uh, well, that's my duty, that's my, that's my job, it's to be here. I mean, there's, there's times that when you're really, really sick that you can't make it. Right. But as long as the Lord leads me and takes care of me, I'm going to be here. And I think all Christians should be that way. I mean, you know, when you wake up in the morning and, and your bones don't want to move and, and you start to stand up and you're about to hit the floor, you know, it'd be easy to say, well, it ain't going to hurt to miss one Sunday. <laughs> You know, as long as we keep going for God, the more He's going to bless us. Amen. I mean, He's going to bless us in there. But if you want a real good blessing, I know I got a good and nice night. And I was give out when it started, but I felt refreshed when it was over with. Yeah. I did. I, I drove my home just feeling good last night. But number 13 says is, is any among you afflicted let him pray is any merry let him sing praises That's right. you know when you feel good it is so easy to have a song on your heart <clears throat> but you know when we're Feeling down, in pain, hurting. 
it don't hurt a thing to let that song come out then. I try to, Tammy gets so aggravated at me, I picked up my daddy's habit. When I'm sitting around, I'm humming. <laughs> the last song that I hear just sticks in my head, and when I get idle, that's the first thing I start doing is humming. She'll reach over and slap me. You shut up. <laughs> that is so irritating. <laughs> but, you know, God gave me something when he saved me. And when I answered the call to preach, he gave me something even better. I can't explain it. It's... It's like I'm always wanting to sing. I'm always wanting to be doing something for me. You know, used to, I'd sit with my nose in the TV all day long. I hardly ever turn the tube on. I mean, Tammy watches it all the time. You know, if I'm in there and she comes in there, she's going to turn the TV on. But I hardly ever turn the TV on anymore. I just sit there and hunt. <laughs> But you know, when you've got a, a song on your heart, you may not be singing it, but if you're humming it, I believe that's giving praise to God too. Just as much as it would be if you're singing. And if, you've got, if you're humming, your mind's on that song and it's not on anything of the world. There's so much happening in this world right now that I don't want to think of it. I won't even watch the news anymore. Because I get depressed when I watch the news. Because you never hear no good news on the news. It's all bad news. This world is getting wickeder and wickeder every day that goes by. When the world makes fun of the president standing in front of the church holding the Bible. And yet they applaud a church being burnt down. Something is wrong. I thank God the president's got enough. Well, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I thank God that he's got a Bible, and I thank God he's not ashamed to stand with his Bible in his hand. I hope he reads it. I don't know that he does. I don't know that he don't, but I hope he reads it. They say the man got saved after he got elected presidency. I don't know. It wasn't there. But. I believe he's saved. I don't know he's saved, but I believe he's saved because they, they say he's a, a saved man. So that's a good thing. He must be saved as much as the world's against him. Because anybody that's saved, the world's going to be against him, especially in this day and age. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. You know, a lot of people don't believe in that. But me, every word that's in this book from Genesis all the way to Revelation, it's in there. I have to believe it. I want to believe it. I'm not saying I have to believe it, but I don't want to. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. But if it's in here, you got to accept it. Right. There's churches that'll pull the whole chapter out of the Bible and just, not literally, but 
you know, they'll set it aside because they don't want to believe that. Their life. Right. There you go. And that's exactly why we have so many versions of the Bible in America. <clears throat> it's because this guy decides he don't want to believe this part, so he's going to yank it out or reword it or make it fit what he wants to believe. That's why I stick with the King James Version. You'll never hear me read out of another Bible. I don't even own another type of Bible. Because this is God's Word. It's, I think He intended us to have it. Nothing broken down. Nothing watered down. Nothing stripped out and thrown away. This is the closest thing that we have to the original Bible that was written in Greek and I believe it's Hebrew, ain't it? Right. What the original Bible was wrote in. But this is the closest thing that we have. And I believe the men who translated it back then was under God's leadership. I've probably done lost 15 viewers on Facebook <laughs> by saying that, but that's okay. God He loves us more than we could ever imagine. Everybody in here is married. You love your husband. You love your wife. But you know that love is nothing to the love that God has for right. his children. I tell my wife I love you with all my heart. And I do. But that is nothing compared to God's love. He went... And he was beat. I'm not talking about beat up. I'm talking about he was beat. They say the leather straps they used had things, what would be a razor blade nowadays, made into them. And every time they slashed him with that, uh, it's not a belt, a uh, whip. whip. That they, it would just pull gashes out of his skin. And he took it. He didn't call the angels to stop it. He didn't say, God, I can't do this. Find somebody else. He took every strike of that wheel. And he had to walk, I don't, I don't know how far it was, but I would say it was a pretty good distance after they beat him. And he had to carry the cross. And thank God for the man that picked it up when he dropped it and carried it for him. How many people do that today? How many would pick up our cross? I'm not talking about a wooden cross. I'm talking about our cross, our burdens, our sickness. How many people on this earth would pick up our cross today and carry it forth? I don't know a soul that would do that. There's probably one on earth. But I don't know But God, or Jesus, carried that cross till they couldn't carry it no more. And when they got to Galgotha, they laid the cross on the ground. 
And you lay Jesus on top of it. I don't I don't know if they nailed his feet first or nailed his hands first. You know, everybody today says he was nailed right here. And they say the reason they believe that is because medical science says that if you're nailed right there and your weight's hanging on that cross, it's going to tire your skin and your bone and everything else that's in there. It's going to tire it out. Well, they can say what they want to. The Bible says he has nail-scarred hands. Now that's another example of using another translation. They want to believe what they want to believe. I'm getting off on that too much. <laughs> but he took all that pain, never said a word. I'm sure he cried out in agony. He didn't ask for nobody to take his place. He didn't ask the angels to come and take him off the cross. He didn't ask God to stop, to make him stop. You know, I was thinking the other night, If I had done something so bad that they were going to uh, uh, crucify me, probably before they even laid me down to put the nails in, I'd be screaming and hollering, Lord, save me, help me. Tell them to stop. I'd be crying for somebody. If Philip was there, I'd probably be hollering to him, Philip, make him quit. I can't handle this. That is a... I would say that's the worst torture you could go through. It's laying there and having a nail put through your hand and through your legs, or feet. I'm sure there's some sick maniac out there that can figure out something that's be more painful. Because there have been a lot of sick killings in this whole world for the past however long America is now, 200 and something years. I'm sure there have been a lot of sick killings in this nation. But I still think that God, that Jesus had the most agonizing death of him. And I know I couldn't have went through it. I mean, when I start to get up, my knee don't want to work, I'm hollering. <laughs> but he took all that pain for us so that we could go free. And what did we do to deserve that? We didn't do nothing to deserve it. Every man and every woman that's ever been born has been just like a filthy bride until they accept Jesus Christ as right. their Savior. That may not be the best way to put it, but that's the only way I know to put it. <coughs> We're nothing. 
And I'm going to try not to go over that song again. <laughs> We're nothing. I still ain't nothing. But God lives within me. Amen. And I just hope that I'm shining a light that somebody can see. I hope I never do anything that would discourage a sinner. Lord, help me if I do. As long as I'm in my right mind, I'm going to try my best never to do anything that would cause a sinner to turn and walk the other way. But I do thank God that he took nothing and made something out of it. When I stand in this pulpit, I don't want people to look at me. I want people to see Jesus in me. Now I'm not a I'm not a fast talker, I'm not well educated. And I'm sure I'm good looking. <laughs> but God chose me for some reason to be a messenger, to be a preacher, to be a pastor. It's beyond me. I'm glad he did. I'm glad he placed me here because I love it here. I hope I'm here to the, the day he calls me home or the rapture happens, whichever comes first. But it's my heart's desire, number one, to see souls saved. If a preacher loses sight of that, he's lost it all. I wish somebody knew would walk in that door every Sunday. That need the Lord. I wish I could say something when they do. I hope I can when they do walk through that door. I hope I can say something that makes them realize that without God, life is hopeless. There's no meaning to life without God. It says, Prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Verse 16. Confess your faults to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, the Catholics believe that you've got to go to the little cage, that's what I call it, and confess your sins to the priest. That ain't what the Bible tells us. Bible tells us to confess our sins to God through Jesus. Jesus is our adversary for everything we need in prayer. God's going to hear that prayer even though we're praying to Jesus. God's going to hear it if we're saved. 
You know, everybody on Facebook says they're praying when you when you know you post something about a family member dying or, or you're sick, having to go to the doctor, whatever. Everybody on there say, We're praying. We're praying. If you go to their home page, a lot of them most of their post is old filthy lucre. Now that tells me that they ain't saved. Either they're saved or they're way out of God's will. And God's not going to hear a sinner's prayer. They can pray to their blue in the face. God's not going to hear their prayer until they pray. Lord, I've sinned. I believe that you died for my sins. Lord, I want you to save me. Not necessarily in those words. But until they pray a prayer of repentance, God is not going to hear nothing out of their mouth. Like I said, they can pray till they're blue in the face. They can pray till they die. That prayer ain't getting no more than six foot away if it's getting that far. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. When we confess, it says to one another, you know, if if me and Daniel, if I was buying something from Daniel, or if I was uh, selling something to Daniel, and I knew that something wouldn't work, but I went ahead and sold it to him, what am I doing? You're lying to him. I'm lying to him. I'm cheating him. Now, if I don't tell him that that thing's not working, what's he going to think of me? Well, that crazy thing, I'll never buy that off of him again. You know, I could sell him something, and it might be working when I sold it to him, and it might tear up. That's happened before. I know it has. It could tear up the minute he puts his hand on it to crank it up or whatever you do with it. But if I go to him and be honest with him and tell him it worked the last time I used it, to me I would be free because I told him the truth. But me Personally, I would do better than that. I would give his money back to him. That would be the right thing to do. And he said, boy, I got a, I got a good deal. I got my money back, you know. And he might be able to fix the thing on down the road, you know. Because I'm not much of a handyman. <laughs> But we need to confess our faults to one another. I tell you, my, my biggest fault myself is a temper. I think I've got it under control because I've not really got mad in a pretty good while. I get aggravated when I, you know, try to do something and my body just ain't able to do it. I get aggravated. But I don't go off the deep end like I used to. <laughs> We've all got faults, whether we want to admit it or not. But if we confess our faults to one another and pray for one another, there's not a day goes by that I don't pray for the baby in church. 
because this is my family. You know, after mom and dad died, people quit coming around. And you know, if you let it, that'll get you depressed because you get to feeling like, well, man, my own family won't have nothing to do with me anymore. And I really felt that way for a long time. But I had to let go of it because it was coming between me and God. And it seemed like when God called me to preach, it took a while to find the right church to preach at because nobody wouldn't even offer to let me preach hardly. But you know, I come up here and y'all took me in I preached them my first time. Well, come back next week. I come back the next week. Well, come back next week. <laughs> and you know, when you're going through those kind of feelings and somebody tells you that, what does that show? That shows love. It does. Now I know I'm not the, I, I know that y'all could have probably waited a little longer and got you a good fireball preacher. That don't have to pause in between his words to, to listen to God to know what to say next. But I'm thankful Y'all don't know what this church has done for me. Spiritually. I mean, y'all have helped us out a lot. Different ways. But the spiritual help means more than any of it does. It really does. And I appreciate and I love every one of you. But if God let me, I'm going to try to quit. But, like I said when I started, I'm not, everybody knows I'm not in good health. And there's not a lot of days that I feel good. I stay tired all the time. And this week has really drugged me down. I mean, you know, I having to get out and, and uh, be with, uh, well, you know, they called Tuesday when uh, Vernell died. And I'm a pastor. It's my duty to go. Whether I felt like it or not, I had to go. I wanted to go because I know that's what the pastor does. He's there for the family when something happens. I went back home, took a shower, headed up to the house. I stayed up there a pretty good while that evening. And we come back on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we had to go to the doctor. All three of us had a doctor's appointment. Then the Friday was the funeral. Yesterday was the same. <laughs> Today's church. It took a lot out of me, both financially and spiritually. But uh, I obeyed God. But I'm going to ask Brother Philip, Brother Daniel, and Brother Ray. Or the elders of the church. I'm going to ask them to come up and pray over me that God will give me strength. Thing. Preacher's the only one that can pray over people. That ain't what that said. That said the elders. 
Well, 